Battlefield 1 is coming back with a bang. EA and DICE has just revealed the release date for the first half of the Turning Tides DLC, a brand new operation campaign, a premium trial event, and some Black Friday sales in the Scrap Exchange. Let's get into this. First of all, the Turning Tides DLC, that's the meat and bones here. We already know that this DLC will be split into two halves, with the first of it releasing in December and the second bit releasing in January. The first half contains two maps and eight new weapons coming on December the 11th for premium members. The two maps are called Cape Hells and Achibaba. You've seen these before, they've been on the CTE recently in testing, and both of them focus on the British assault of the Gallipoli Peninsula in 1915. Cape Hells is like a World War I D-Day event, where the British have to storm the beaches and capture flags on the mainland whilst the Ottomans defend them, and Achibaba is a pure infantry map that's set back from the shoreline. A brand new game mode is coming with this DLC as well, it's called Conquest Assault, and when I say brand new game mode, I mean brand new to Battlefield 1, we've seen this in previous Battlefield games before. This is obviously a variation of Conquest, where one team at the start of a round, they hold all of the flags on the map. The other team must try and capture as many as they can, but they hold a ticket advantage at the start to keep the score fair. If the assaulting team can capture all of the flags and lock out the enemy HQs, then the assaulting team will win when the last of the enemies has been killed on the map. Because you've locked out their spawn and they don't control any flags, they can no longer spawn. The eight new weapons have already been detailed, but I'll wrap them up here for you in case you missed those videos on my channel. Six of them are four main weapons for your primary slot, and two of them are melee weapons. All of the six primary weapons are quite different from some of the weapons that we've seen added before. The two new melee weapons, the Naval Cutlass and the Grappling Hook, both of these will be added to the game in some way, but right now we're not sure if they'll be unlockable through assignments or whether they will be puzzle piece melee weapons. Need to wait for more information there. The Assault class gets two new weapons, the first one the M1912 Machine Pistol and the M1917 Trench Carbine is the second. Both of these will look a little bit more like pilot or tanker class weapons based on previous additions to the game, but this time DICE decided to add these to the Assault class. Now the Machine Pistol, obviously, is a fully automatic pistol and it can fire rounds extremely fast and it makes it an awesome extreme close range weapon. And the Trench Carbine, that has a little bit more range to it. Both very different additions, and ones that will change up the playstyle of the class quite a bit. The Medic class next, and we have one new rifle here, the Farquhar Hill. This is a British prototype weapon that never saw full use by any forces in World War I, but it was on the cusp of being ordered just as the war ended. In real life, it was a fully automatic weapon, but here DICE has restricted it to a semi-automatic fire mode with a 20-round drum magazine. As an added bonus, it sounds like a hammer smashing on concrete. It's got a really heavy thud when you fire it, quite satisfying. The support class also gets one new weapon, the M1917 Browning Heavy Machine Gun. Now this is more commonly seen as a stationary machine gun, but here in Battlefield 1, DICE has decided to give it to the support soldiers so that they can carry it around. It's got a absolutely massive 250 round box magazine, and that can fire for a long, long time before overheating, so you're barely going to have to reload the thing, and it has a nice flat recoil pattern, which should make shooting this thing at long range nice and comfortable. I believe there is a telescopic version, which means those long range shots should be easier to see. And lastly, we have the Scout class. Here we get two brand new rifles, the Type 38 Arasaka and the Carcano M91 Carbine. Italian fans will finally be rejoicing at the inclusion of their standard issue rifle from World War I, and the Arasaka, I believe, is a nod to the Japanese naval forces who did take part in some battles during World War I. 
There will be a new operation coming with the Turning Tides DLC. It will string the Cape Hells and Achi Barbar maps together and sees the British making a huge push against the Ottoman Empire as they land on the Gallipoli shorelines. There won't be another operation coming in January. Those two remaining maps have no link in World War I history, so this is the only new operation that we're getting. One of the two new vehicles coming in this DLC comes in the December half of the patch, the L-Class Destroyer. At the moment, we don't have any footage of it for any kind of reference. That will be a surprise on launch day, but we do know it will have four seats and you can use it against all different types of targets, whether they're on land, in the sea or in the air. So there's lots of different types of weapons that you can use on this thing. Now, moving into the second half of this DLC that will be coming in January 2018, we'll be playing on another two maps, completing the DLC lineup. We have Zeebrugge and Heligoland Bite. Now, both of these are going to be heavily naval focused maps, but there will be space for infantry combat as well. A new faction, the British Royal Marines, will also be added in January as they play a major role in the two battle locations that DICE has chosen. The second of the two new vehicles is coming in the January update. This is the C-Class Airship and it will be available on these last two maps. You'll be able to deliver Death from Above according to the blog post and DICE has stated it will be smaller than the Behemoth Airship and it will move faster. So you can kind of think of this as DICE's answer to the missing World War I helicopter. And wrapping up this DLC, we have a new elite class being added. This is the Infiltrator. This soldier will be able to move faster across the map, faster than other soldiers, with a permanent sprint boost, and will have the ability to call in artillery strikes and place down mobile spawn points that friendly troops can use to get closer to the action. This seems to be based on the character from the runner mission in Battlefield 1 single player, but it just looks nothing like them. Now, based on the description of this elite class, I think this will be coming in December, although the blog post hasn't confirmed that. It's just with all that running about, I hardly think this is going to be an elite class solely focused on naval maps. There will, of course, be new service assignments for you to complete, specializations to unlock, dog tags, service stars, medals, ribbons, and even more to unlock, so plenty of new things to add to your achievement list, and likely all of the new weapons that are coming to the game, all of those primary weapons I mentioned earlier, they will all be behind assignments as well, so there'll be plenty to unlock on launch day. Now, moving on from turning tides a little bit to a couple of smaller mentions, EA is currently having a Black Friday sale on Battlefield 1, money off the Revolution Edition on all three platforms, and the Premium Pass is also heavily discounted, so if you haven't got one of those yet, you can go and pick it up if you want to. Besides that, DICE will be running some in-game discounts in the Scrap Exchange on items, so if you've got some scrap saved up, it might be best to wait until the 23rd of November when this starts to see if you can pick up some cool skins for less scraps. A premium trial is also running from the 22nd of November to the 4th of December, which means any player who doesn't currently have a premium pass will be able to access all of the DLC maps in the game for free. All of the maps from They Shall Not Pass and the In the Name of the Tsar DLCs will be available for everyone to play. You won't need to download anything as each patch contains all the game data regardless of whether you have premium or not. So once the trial goes live, you'll just be able to join those servers and play on some cool maps. And lastly for today, a brand new Operation Campaign is launching on November the 22nd. This one is called Fall of Empires. It combines two base game operations, Conquer Hell and Iron Walls, and it will reward players for completing both of them with Operation Battle Packs. This is exactly like Eastern Storm, only this time all players will be able to take part because these are base game maps. The previous one was premium only. And so, there you are, all the details on the Turning Tides DLC, a release date for all of that content coming soon to the game, and plenty of smaller updates as well. We're just about three weeks away from the third DLC of Battlefield 1. 
Thank you very much for watching. Leave your comments down below and I'll try and read as many as I can. But until next time, my name is Westy and I'll catch you guys in the next video.